Welcome back, everybody, to another edition of Tailgate Talk here at SunJournal.com. I'm Justin Pelletier, joined as always by Mr. Callie Oaks and Mr. Randy Whitehouse, who apparently want to beat me up. <laughs> We're back here. Happy We're birthday. on location. Oh, thank you very much. Unfortunately, <laughs> um, we are uh, we are here on location at Jay High School this week, uh, where we've talked uh, with a couple of folks here about the the Jay season to date. Uh, they've had a couple of games. Already a Miranda Cook and a Sacopee Valley, I believe it was, that they played. And, and they've got, uh, what, who they have? Oak Hill this week. Let's say, before we get to that, let's take a quick look back at the week that was. Anything surprising this week at all, Rain? Uh, just the overall lack of quality football. <laughs> that's pretty harsh. It's uh, pretty accurate. Yeah, it's, that's what I'm Fair. here for, accuracy. <laughs> Anybody that uh, surprised you at all? Uh, well, I was a, a little bit surprised uh, by how well Lisbon's defense has been playing, uh, especially against Ola Beach. You're surprised by Lisbon. <laughs> by their defense, yes, I am a little bit surprised by their defense. Sorry. Uh, I expected their offense to actually be behind, but the defense, I always, I guess I always count on it. I don't know. Oh, I got to see the game, and I'll tell you what, guys, Old Orchard Beach has two absolutely bruising running backs uh, in so the red and they Regis. Go? <laughs> and they couldn't, for whatever reason, they're both sitting there at six foot four, 230 pounds, and they cannot get through this line of Lisbon players dominated by kids who are 160 100, pounds big. 130 pound Mike McNamara. And yeah, I, it, it's Toby incredible Harrington. how Dick Minahan does that every year. He's able to, it's all technique, and, and it's just absolutely incredible. It's, Everything else went pretty much as planned, though. This week. It's coaching. I mean, in the past, you know, five, ten years ago, I might have picked Old Orchard to win that game, but I've learned my lesson, I guess <laughs> might say. Everything else, though, uh, Berman pretty much has, has scripted this week? Yeah, I think so. Uh, Dirigo got a challenge for a half from Winthrop and, and managed to pull that one out in, in big fashion. Jay got a pretty good test from Miranda Cook. Livermore Falls, no test at all from Madison. Mount Blue shutting out Oxford Hills. I think I was surprised by the margin there. Well, we are here at Jay High School for a reason. Let's, uh, let's talk to a couple of folks here at Jay. Uh, first, we'll start with head coach Mark Bonavi, who had uh, plenty to say both about his team and about his starting quarterback, Austin Clark. Well, uh, good start to the season so far, Mark, 2-0. Uh, what have you guys done well so far this year? How do you like your team's progress to this point in the season? Well, obviously, we're you know very excited and happy about the way we've started. Uh, offensively, we're still a work in progress. Uh, we're getting better every week. We've left some points on the field, which you know we feel we need to get a little bit better at. Uh, our strength has definitely been our defense. Uh, you know, we've been playing well as a group and uh, we look pretty physical and, uh, you know, we're happy with where that's going right now. Uh, guys must feel like you're in a different league right now. You haven't really played any uh, old Campbell Conference foes. Yeah. You've had Socopee and uh, Marana Cook and you got Oak Hill coming up this week. Uh, is it more difficult to, to prepare for those teams that you've really never played before? Yeah, it was difficult because, um, you know, I, I had no especially with the two new coaches at Miranda Cook and, and uh, Hotel. I had no, you know, no idea what they were going to be doing or what they were like. Uh, you know, if it would have been the same coaches, I probably could have got some video from, you know, from someone else that, that would have helped us. But, uh, you know, it made it interesting, you know, because you only had a chance. You know, when we play the teams that we've been playing, you know, forever, I have files full right. of information, you know, on each team. So. Uh, you know, it, it made it difficult, for sure, but, you know, we'll get all three of those out of the way and, and we'll get back to playing the teams that we know. Uh, Austin Clark, a quarterback this year, obviously a very important part of your offense. And, uh, you know, just talk about what his presence means, not just on the offensive side, but, but on the defensive side as well. Well, I mean, Austin brings a lot of things to the table for us. Uh, you know, number one, he brings leadership. Uh, you know, he's a four-year starter. This is his third year as starting at quarterback. Uh, you know, and he's got a good handle on the offense. So, you know, we were able, especially this year, to to kind of be a little bit further ahead when we started uh, the season, uh, which has helped us now. It's just getting, you know, some of the younger guys to, to uh, you know, get a little bit better at their assignments and things like that so we can get that going. But, uh, you know, and then defensively, like we were talking earlier, I mean, he brings, you know, his – he plays free safety like a linebacker. He brings, you know, some, some toughness and uh, – uh, you know, he's definitely uh, a big, big part of our team. And thanks a lot to Mark for joining us. And uh, we also got a chance to talk to Clark about his season so far and what he expects out of the team going forward. Uh, Austin, thanks for doing this. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Uh, 
Welcome back to Maine. You were in Virginia there for well, almost a year, right? Uh, six months, yeah. So. And it's, uh, it's like uh, falling off a bicycle, just getting right back on and, and leading the Tigers again. Right? Uh, yeah, I'm coming back into the program. I mean, nothing's really changed. Running the same offense, uh, same stuff on defense. Um, so it's not very hard to catch up. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, you're obviously a, a big part of this offense, and, and we were talking earlier about how it plays to your strengths. Just you know, tell me a little bit about uh, what it is that that you can do in this offense, not just in terms of of what your talents are running and throwing, but just in terms of directing the offense and leading it. Offensively, I mean, we got a lot of young guys, especially in the line. We got a few young running backs, and I mean, they've looked at me in the game, asking me, you know, Austin, hey, where do I go? You know, that's what I'm here for. You know, I'm the captain. I look to lead them in the right direction and try to win us a game. <laughs> um, Offensively as a threat, um, past few games I haven't been having to worry about it. Other guys have been carrying the load like Coach said earlier, so we'll see what happens. I do my role, they do their roles. So. On the defensive side, as Coach said, you're like a, like a linebacker at, at safety. Yeah. You try to bring that physical approach to the defense? Well, I mean, since my freshman year, Coach has always told me defense, defense, defense. And we all know Coach Bonifi is a defensive guy, so man, we, didn't, we can't satisfy him on defense. We can't really satisfy him anywhere on the field. So we try to fire up on defense, and that's what carries us through the game. So, you Guys have had good success so far, 2-0. and and It's been about the defense, hasn't it? It, defense it has been, been mostly defense. Um, defense has won the last two games. And like everyone says, defense wins championships. Uh, so. Um, that's what we're going to base ourselves around is our defense. We always have. What's it going to take for the offense to start to click a little bit more? I mean, I, I assume you guys are, ex are expecting to, to get a little bit more productive on offense. Productive? Um, get the short passing game in. You know, we've been, everyone hears about the long ball, but I think if we get the short passing game down, we'll be looking good. Pound it inside, pound it outside. We'll get things going. Play some J football. Play right? some J football. <laughs> and again, that was Austin Clark here at J High School. Well, guys, we've got week three facing us uh, this weekend. And J High School, let's start there. They play a Saturday game against Oak Hill, another opponent that they don't know so much about. No, and it's another one of those opponents that's down from Class B, such as Marana Cook. I think I talked to a couple of the J football players yesterday, actually, when I was here for field hockey and soccer. And I think they were surprised by the strength of Marana Cook, the depth. You know, it was a tougher opponent than they expected, and I think you can expect more of the same from Oak Hill coming off a win at Yarmouth. Uh, they've got their running game on track. They got a little confidence. They won late. They came from behind to do it. It's gonna be a tough test for Jay. How about you, Randy? As far as the Oak Hill matchup is concerned, uh, Oak Hill uh, certainly riding some confidence uh, coming off that win against Yarmouth. Uh, Brett Turcott's emergence as a quarterback last week. They still had a lot of problems with turnovers, and, and that will kill them if they continue to have those problems, especially against a, a J team that's still trying to find itself on offense a little bit. But if they give them a short field, teams can find them find their offense pretty quickly. And Saturday game's not the, uh, uh, apparently the two strongest games this weekend uh, on Saturday. The other game, of course, Deerigo against that Old Orchard Beach team that we just talked about that played Lisbon last week. Deerigo also a strong team. Uh, probably the favorite to come out of that, that conference. Yeah, I would say Old Orchard started the season as one of the co-favorites in the South. Deerigo is certainly the, the clear favorite in the tougher division of the two, the North. That's proven itself out to be the tougher division over the first two weeks. I don't see that game being uh, much closer than the winter game, maybe for a half again, and then Deerigo's depth. They've just got too many backs. They can go with a big backfield, a small backfield. They can obviously throw the ball with Nick Crushfield. So another big win for the Cougars. Really. Anything from you, or are you uh, echoing I, Cal's sentiments? I, I have uh, every opinion that he has on it, and a few more I'd like to keep to myself. <laughs> <laughs> Friday, sl Friday slate of games, we've got Scott Hegan at Lewiston. That's the game that interests me. I was going to say, that Friday might too. be the most underrated game of this yeah, whole week. Yeah, you know, you talk about the two games on Saturday, but I think that's the game. Just Scout Hegan's 0-2. We've seen this movie before. They've started off slowly, and then they'll end up in the PTC championship game at the end of the year. This is a huge game for Lewiston. They haven't played all that dynamically in going 2-0. Oh. They've beaten <laughs> Very a couple political. they've beaten a couple of the lesser teams in the conference uh, by convincing margins. But this is a Scout Hegan team that can actually throw the ball this year with Brandon McGowan. They also have Taylor Bradley, the former Mountain Valley back, who's had a couple of good starts. They're frustrated after basically blowing a game against Brunswick in the fourth quarter last week. And 
that they're, they're going to be coming to Lewiston intent on not going 0-3 and all that. Yeah, Lewiston uh, got good production out of the running game last week. Not so much out of the passing game. That's still yet to click. Uh, you know, it'd be interesting to see if, as Cal mentioned, Scal Hegan's uh, offense featuring the pass a little bit more. If Lewiston gets a little bit more confidence in their passing game, we see a lot more balls in the air this week. That would be you know, kind of strange to see between Lewis and Scout. <laughs> Two but, running teams. Yeah, so yeah. Really. It'd be interesting to see, but I, I think it will be uh, the game of the week. Brewer and Edward Little, Eddie's might steal one here. It's a chance for Yale to get a win. Um, I'm, I'm not going to go as far as to predict that, but it's certainly a winnable game for them. It's a long trip for Brewer. I know Yale's glad they don't have to go up there like Lewis. Mount Ararat at Mount Blue, Randy expecting Mount Blue here pretty pretty easily? Uh, well, yeah, fairly easily. Uh, Mount Blue's getting uh, on the right track after uh, handling Oxford Hills fairly easily last week. Uh, it's their defense, I think, that's really going to carry them uh, through these next few games. Uh, their offense is going to put up some points, but I think it's their defense that's going to be the, the real key in that game. We've got Levitt at Belfast, Mountain Valley at Wells, Lisbon at Booth Bay, Miranda Cook at Livermore Falls. Winthrop at Sockabee Valley and Greeley at Great New Gloucester. Anything stand out on that slate? Three things stand out. Mountain Valley Wells, two undefeated teams. Granted, Mountain Valley should go down there as a heavy favorite, but stranger things have happened on a long road trip like that. Miranda Cook, Livermore Falls, I think that's the first real test for Livermore Falls so far. They've had Madison and uh, Booth Bay, who they've blown out. Greeley, Great New Gloucester, the Sean Austin Bowl ought to be good. <laughs> Lisbon, Booth Bay ain't what it used to be. No. Uh, and it's too bad, but uh, Booth Bay's still in transition. Greyhounds uh, looking at a, a very good chance of starting out 3-0. and and Nobody in, in, the, uh, in the Campbell Conference wants to see that. I know if Dick Minahan felt if he could get one of those first two games against Oak Hill or Old Orchard, it might make their season and give them momentum to, to maybe run the table. They're 2-0, so that ought to be scary <laughs> for everybody else. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you all for watching. Uh, live from Jay High School, this has been Tailgate Talk here at Sun Media Group. Join us again next week.